Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. <laughs> I know uh, it's been a crazy couple weeks and I've been doing these voiceover vlogs with something different, but I wanted to do something different with you today and talk about what's in my grooming box for the spring. So, um, Riding Warehouse thankfully has been a great company for me to work with and I've been able to get a lot of my essentials for being a barn manager and groom uh, from them at great prices. So I wanted to show you guys uh, all of the products that are essential to me as we come into the springtime. I know it's shedding season and we're seeing their coats again after months of blanketing, at least for me. <laughs> so I'm motivated to groom again and I wanted to talk a little bit about what I use. So I will put a link below to a list of the products as well for you guys and which ones you can get on Riding Warehouse, but I'm pretty sure almost, if not all of them, you can purchase from Riding Warehouse. And they have really great prices, super shipping, an awesome return policy, so I've just really enjoyed working with them. And um, this is my <laughs> makeshift grooming bag. This is just a tote from Home Goods, but uh, Lemieux is actually coming out with a new grooming bag, I believe a pro series. And I spoke with Riding Warehouse about ordering it, so I'm holding out to hopefully have a new grooming bag, but in the meantime, we're working with a tote. So I'll do a couple mini tutorials on grooming Doppler. But I wanted to dig into all of these tools. We're obviously not going to use all of them today. It's not a good bath day. It's a little bit cold and windy. But So, when I start off grooming, I always start with feet first. And I have a hoof pick here. Doppler's feet are actually pretty clean right now because he got his feet done by the farrier today. So he's looking pretty sharp. But a hoof pick is obviously an essential for anyone and everyone. On the subject of hoof products, I don't have any in my bag currently. Um, I always keep on hand this Thrush and White Line uh, product from Equiderma. This stuff is great. And then for horses that need hoof hardening, I prefer the Keratex. And then when it comes to moisture in the hot summer days, I usually go with the Healthy Hair Care hoof uh, moisturizer. Uh, speaking of healthy hair care products, this is another one of my go-tos, the pink stuff. I'm almost out of the pink stuff right now. I need to order more from Riding Warehouse, but this is the bottle it comes in. And then it's a concentrate. I mix it up in a spray bottle with water. It's a, like, it comes in a concentrated form and I dilute it in the spray bottle. After I pick feet, the next thing I do is curry. As you guys know, and I will link here because it's my favorite product currently, I typically do my currying with the Posture Prep Groomer. Um, I don't do it in a circular curry format though. The other thing that I also prefer for currying and the initial lifting of the dirt on the horse's coat is gonna be the hands-on gloves. These are also great for legs because you can morph them around. Typically, I would say nowadays, I don't use a traditional curry. Um, it is a great tool that's pretty low priced if um, you know the posture prep groomer is too expensive or whatnot or the hands-on gloves, but currently I find that for my currying or lifting the dirt process of the grooming, I like to use the hands-on gloves and <laughs> the posture prep groomer. Doppler is not amused to be in the vlog today. When it comes to shedding season, which we are in right now as we come into spring, I like to follow that process up with the strip hair groomer. I will check to see if this is on their website, but the strip hair groomer has been a really great tool. You can also use it without currying. I'll show you guys quickly. It is fantastic. I've seen it on Instagram and thought, scooch over buddy. I had seen it on Instagram and thought, oh, I, that can't work that well, but it really does. And it's fantastic this time of year. I have used it both when I don't have time to curry or when I curry first and use it after. I always keep extra microfiber cloths around um, just for wiping down faces and whatnot with hot water. 
also in the winter time, hot toweling. We're not gonna dive into that today because we're coming into spring. It's not really hot toweling season. The next part of what I do grooming wise is gonna be using a, I prefer a medium a hard brush or a stiff brush to then dust all the dirt off. I have quite the collection now of Haas brushes, as you can see, and they're all used for something different. When I'm doing a more lifting dirt or getting away curried hair dust, I either use my military brush or this, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it, <laughs> brush. Then once I've used more of a uh, medium hard stiff brush to get all the dirt and extra shedded hair off, I can use a finishing brush. And I have a couple different ones. This one's a little more firmer, um, but still soft finishing brush that I use on their coat. This is a super soft lamb's wool that I either use on their face or at horse shows for shine. Anyway, so you can see I have a lot of things going on. This is the posture prep groomer that I was talking about, but I think you guys are pretty familiar with that. Doppy loves the Haas brushes, especially on his face. He loves, he loves his face being brushed. He says, oh yes, brush the face. So the main reason that I really wanted to bring Riding Warehouse into this vlog is that not only do they have a lot of great products at great prices, and are just a great company, but they have an awesome collection of Haas brushes, which are really high quality, and they have a whole guide to buying them, and which brushes are for what part of the grooming process. I actually recently just got this Haas brush, which is for washing, that I had read about on their guide that I didn't even know existed. I will have to talk about that when we do a bath one day, but, I love that about their website, and I will link the Haas um, brush description and purchasing guide down below in the description because I found that tool so helpful for me when I found that I had a, I had like two random Haas brushes that I was like, oh, I really like these brushes. Which ones do I get next? There's like a million options, and they're super expensive. So that was really fun for me to read through the guide and understand how their brushes work. I found that that was a great tool that they have for everyone that you can just read through. So I'll link that down below if you're interested in Haas brushes. That's the way to go. Then I go on to mane and tail from there. I have a mane comb and a tail brush. Very basic, standard uh, mane and tail brush. Nothing fancy for me. I also have in this box my tail rakes that you guys may or may not have seen me use from Smart Grooming. And while we're on the topic of smart grooming, in my box is this new peppermint shampoo that I got from them that I love, it smells amazing. There are a few other products that I have in my grooming bag that I find essential just to keep close by that are things that I still use pretty often and not maybe don't necessarily want them in my tack trunk. The first one is Coat Defense Preventative Powder, especially in the winter time and as we go through sum summer where we have fungus under blankets or because of rain and mud. This stuff is amazing. It's like dry shampoo that you just curry in after you ride and it helps dry the coat faster and prevents fungus. Great stuff. I believe Aquaderma is making a product similar to this now, but I have not tried it yet. Um, speaking of Aquaderma, they're Skin lotion for fungus. I always keep this on hand because this stuff is amazing, especially as we are in mud season in the spring and all of my horses are prone to fungus down and around here. And in these areas, this stuff is great, really super. And I'm pretty sure all of the Equiderma products you can get on Riding Warehouse's website. Another Equiderma product is their wound ointment. All their products are fantastic, don't have anything to complain about. When I have finished grooming and brushed all the dust off, that's when I like to spray with my pink stuff. I also am a big believer in using a heavy amount of pink stuff in their manes and tails as like a conditioner. 
Um, this stuff has just been really great. I like to keep some sore no more close by um, just for after we have hard workouts and I want to put some liniment on. This is just a small bottle in gel form, which is nice to have. Lavender oil. <laughs> As you guys may be aware if you watch the vlog regularly, Doppler is a little bit of an anxious goober, although he's been pretty chill lately. But when he seems to be having a little bit of an anxious day and I want to help him relax as he groom, as I get ready to groom him, I love to rub some of this on my hands and let him breathe it in his nose. He likes it. I do realize that we are not giving him a bath today, but as for those bath essentials, um, hands-on gloves are usually what I bathe with. And uh, I, like I said, I love this Smart Grooming Shampoo. Otherwise, bath-wise, that's not in my bag, but that I use is just on dish soap. This is great when you do have some fungus going on. Also, the Equiderma Shampoo and Conditioner, I really love. It's neem-based and aloe-based. Super great stuff for horses that have sensitive skin. Yeah. Anyways, I think that pretty much sums up what's in my grooming bag right now as we go into the spring. Are you the most handsome? I don't think there's anything else that I'm forgetting currently. There will definitely be some things that I'll have to add to my grooming bag um, as we come into summer. I like fly spray, which I, again, prefer Equiderma stuff. Uh, but we'll have to do an updated version then. I would say very spring specific product that is in my bag right now that's probably only in my grooming bag this time of year mostly is that strip hair groomer. I also love to use the strip hair groomer for baths as we come into the warmer weather. It really helps um, squeegee the, the water off while you're stripping the hair, which is great. So that pretty much wraps up. I'm gonna groom my buddy here now that's been patiently hanging out while we talk. Oof. If you guys have any questions about the products I use or why I don't have something in my box, please feel free to ask in the comments below. Uh, I always like what getting questions. And I will make sure once I get my new grooming bag that we will do a show version of what's in my grooming bag because there are probably a few things that change. Not too much, but some things. So I'm gonna get to cleaning this goober up now. That's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Thanks so much for checking out what's in my grooming box and I'll see you guys next time.